you, uh, you guys will notice no slides. So uh, I do have a tendency to waffle, so if I seem like I'm getting totally off topic, just kind of try and redirect me back onto something. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I've actually brought helpers just to kind of steer me on a path, which is good. Um, it's been a, a heck of a journey with BizDojo. Uh, we actually just hit our seventh year mark. Um, it's a really interesting thing when you kind of think about innovation and creativity uh, and problem solving. And, and our, our business for Jonah and I, my co-founder, really formed out of, uh, out of this kind of whole notion of how do you break things and how do you make them better. Um, we met working under Rob Fife um, at, uh, at, in New Zealand and, and it was kind of, um, it was the first time that we'd ever been exposed to an organisation of that scale just really trying to transform how we work. And, and from there we've now had over a thousand companies work through BizDojo, uh, which is around about three and a half thousand people. Um, and uh, we're just about to hit the 7,000 square metre mark for our, our business. And so through this time period, what's, what's been really interesting is it's all about the human beings. It's all about the individuals and the people that a actually inhabit our environments. And, and as we saw in some of those slides before, the things that really resonate with me is around diversity. Um, and and there's, there's kind of some interesting kind of things that come out of diversity. Our, our environments we try and have as a, a kind of a mini laboratory to kind of test how a city might work. Our spaces are very much in tune with the, break, you know, the, the breakdown and the makeup of the diverse communities that exist within Auckland. And we're always trying to look at, you know, how do we be global? How do we be connected to the world? And one of the interesting things for us around diversity is it actually builds resilience. It builds um, sustainability. I mean, often we kind of see, you know, tech's going to lead the way, but actually uh, technology is only as good as the creatives uh, who kind of challenge their thinking. I mean, so much innovation over the decades has come out of sci-fi. Uh, you know, it's not scientists that are necessarily behind that, but crazy kind of off-the-wall thinkers. And one of the things that I'm really impressed with Auckland, and, and I guess I've kind of got a slightly different sort of path to you. I've just recently, three years ago, moved back down to Wellington after being in Auckland for 10 years. And the thing that really stood out to me moving back to Wellington was the fact that most Aucklanders have a sense of global kind of focus. Um, a lot of other regions in New Zealand are often looking very inward and, and one of the things that really stood out to me with a lot of people I was talking to in Wellington is they couldn't do business with someone unless they could go and have a coffee with them, as against, which is quite strange, or a craft beer as it might be now. But, <laughs> but in Auckland there was this real sense of there's not enough work here, there's not enough business, so I've got to go global. And you, you kind of get that. You walk along Queen Street, you walk along K Road, Ponsonby, and it feels like an incredibly diverse, it feels like a very multicultural city. And I think that's a real strength for us. And I feel like we really need to kind of hone in on that more. Um, through our work with ATED, um, who we've we had the pleasure of collaborating on with the delivery of GRID, um, which was the first of its kind in Australasia to be delivered like this, an innovation strategy around how do you kind of drive and grow more businesses and help businesses scale up. Um, it's, been, it's been one heck of a journey. I mean, we've had literally thousands of people a month come through events over the last two years. I think we've just gone over two years, haven't we? Something like that. Yeah, thanks. Fact check. Um, and, you know, and with the environment with Grid down in Winyard Quarter, it's ended up being kind of this neutral territory for uh, universities, businesses, corporates, banks, all sorts of people to come together and go, hey, we've got to connect, we've got to share these ideas, we've got to kind of push this stuff. And I suppose the thing that I really wanted to sort of focus on today was was really around how do we amplify more of that? How, how do you guys take more responsibility for that stuff as well? I mean, you know, it really does sit with you. And, and how do we try and push this level of creativity and growth? I mean, one of the things that, um, and this is probably where I start waffling a little bit, but one of the things that really stood out to me the other day, and I was, I was just mentioning to the, the other speakers before we got on, is I had this epiphany on a flight to Christchurch for the opening of our new space down there where I realised that my business partners and I signed leases for 20 years. And so I've got a personal guarantee for 20 years on a site, which is quite disconcerting. Uh, being that I'm going to be a lot older. And, and I, I suddenly start thinking about, you know, what is our responsibility around creating prosperity in Auckland and growing, growing this economy here? And when we start to think out, like, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, how many of you think about what life's like at that point? I mean, most of us as business owners, we kind of only think sort of 90 days or 12 months out. Often we don't really think beyond that. And one of the things that really stood out to me uh, on the trip to Israel 
when he mentioned before, was I, I got this real sense of social responsibility from a lot of Israeli business founders and creators. They really had a sense of, like, my job is to create jobs for the future, for the next generation. How do I create prosperity for my grandkids, not just about how do I make wealth for me? And I, and I came back, and there's been obviously a lot of stuff that's come out of that tour, and we've been, I've been you know, really humbled to be part of that experience and see what Simon and Spark and obviously the other, the, other, uh, the members of that group are, are trying to push New Zealand forward around that. And I think uh, it's not the silver bullet, but it's awesome to see that stuff coming together. And so many Auckland enterprise companies actually getting in the mix on that. I think it's really, really commendable and, and very fortunate for Auckland to be able to have that. But, you know, I, I guess for yourselves, if you're business owners, do you think about how do I create jobs in Auckland? You know, how do I create... Uh, prosperity for that next generation? I mean, I, is that something that anyone in the room thinks about? Does anyone think about it? There you go. There's a couple. We've got three, four hands. Awesome. Um, that's a little more than I thought. And, and, and I think this is something that I think if we're going to build this innovative city or keep kind of pushing this forward, I think more of us need to take responsibility ourselves to actually move our businesses in that direction. We need to start thinking a little further than 90 days, a little further than 12 months. We need to think about what our what our, I guess, I kind of use this word a lot, but what our responsibility is to the whole region. You know, how do we create a more healthy, more vibrant city? It's not just about how we lead tech and how we create kind of value. Because, I mean, San Francisco, amazing place. Obviously, notwithstanding, an incredible place. But, and I'd love to have some of the stats, and Auckland have some of those stats, but they also have tremendous issues with homelessness. They have tremendous crime rates. There's, there's, you know, it's not all... It's not all awesome. And I think, you know, Auckland has a unique opportunity of being able to not only be an incredibly creative and innovative city uh, with so many universities intertwined in the fabric of the city, but, but also we've got a responsibility to this population of people as to how do we create a future for everyone. And, and I guess I was just really wanting to sort of kind of get that across to you guys as well, that, you know, I hope I, I go to a lot of talks, and obviously you guys probably do too, you know, how do you go home thinking about, well, what can my mark be on Auckland and what can I take some responsibility for? You know, how do you try and collaborate a little bit more? Because we, we use that word a lot. We talk about it's all about collaboration and community and coming together. But what does it all really mean? For us, uh, within BizDojo and obviously within the, the work that AT's doing with GRID, there has to be around tangible connection. There has to be a mutual beneficial outcome for the parties that are involved. You know, uh, someone who's got a problem, collaborating with someone else who's got that, you know, got that solution, bringing those things together and creating some genesis from that and then trying to take that product to the world. I mean, I think one of the challenges we actually have in Auckland, and this is a national problem, this isn't just isolated to Auckland, is Kiwis just need to be a little bit more motivated to take a bit more risk. You know, we, we, we kind of, we talk about being uh, an innovative culture. We talk about, you know, number eight wire and that kind of thing. But we do have a tendency to kind of beat up on each other if you kind of have a failure. We still do that a lot. And, you know, and how does Auckland try to reposition that stuff so that we're not doing that so much? So it's, it's less for me about saying failure is okay, but more about going before someone hits a wall, how do we actually get stuck in there and go, hey, mate, I'm going to help you with this? Before that all turns to custard and you lose your house and it all turns pear-shaped, how do we actually get involved and intervene earlier? And I think that's some of the stuff that I think we need to all take a bit more responsibility in Auckland and do that. Um, I guess thinking about the future, and I'm kind of just checking my time there. Oh, look at that. Oh, good. Um, you know, thinking about the future for Auckland, you know, and, and I, I come back to this idea around these leases for 20 years, and I think about... How do we be relevant in our business for, you know, a six-year-old now? Why would that, you know, six-year-old in, in 20 years want to come and work out at Biz Dojo and launch their idea and, and create it? And it's, and I guess the big thing that we try and talk to a lot of people about is always, always kind of this ebb and flow of kind of how do you pivot all the time? How are you always following where this market is and looking to where it's going? And I think one of the big opportunities for Auckland is to try and kill this kind of regional rhetoric that kind of goes around. I mean, we've all experienced it. It's like, oh, it's Auckland's fault, or, you know, it's Wellington's fault, or it's Christchurch's fault, or whatever it is. There's all this beating up all the time, but I think Auckland is kind of like the big powerhouse for the economy here. We've kind of got to really kind of knock that on its ear and go, New Zealand needs to rally together as a unit and actually try and 
go for it on the world stage because if we don't, other countries are. They are very motivated to push forward and, and we're just going to be kind of left in the dust a little bit. Uh, I won't end on that really negative note. But <laughs> it's all done. Um, yeah, look, you know, I love the fact that these types of conversations and these types of discussions are happening because I, I think too often um, we think a little bit um, too sort of short-sighted. We're a little bit, uh, we're a little bit blind to what the actual real opportunities are and how we kind of work across sector and we work across businesses more. So I really love the slides where we were talking about that, that sense of diversity and, uh, and how we push that. And there is some amazing stuff that comes out of Auckland. I mean, you know, there's been some incredible success stories of businesses that have kind of taken their idea to the world and how do we replicate more of that. I mean, one of the things that really stood out for me, again, on that Israel trip is the fact that every founder that I spoke to said, this is a billion dollar idea, I'm taking it to the world, I'm, I'm not validating it here in Israel, it's, I'm, I'm on a plane to New York, I'm on a plane to wherever it is. And, and I kind of feel like, you know, if you're having conversations that are with other founders and other creators and those kind of things, compel them to get on a plane, have some guts and push themselves more. You know, I think that's, uh, you know, something we all need to try and say to people is, you know, there's a big world out there to the end of that slide, you know, what's your piece of it? And then, and then how do you kind of bring that back and create more opportunity for New Zealand out of it? So um, that's me, waffle complete.